the SQA70. This is what we're going to talk today. We're going to uncase it, we'll review it, we test it, and we discuss why it needs even another SQA. And all that right after the trailer. Hey, this is Fear Into Space. I'm Sasha from Switzerland. So good to meet you on, and thanks for watching my channel. So there's a lot today which we have to unpack and we start with something completely different. And that is Helena is back. Helena is an amazing astrophotographer and YouTuber, but she was two years gone as she was studying and now she's back. And she's back with a dedication of love to astrophotography in a movie called Capturing Light in the Dark. And no matter if you know Helena already from earlier or if you did not know her because you started your astrophotography, I hope you later, I would absolutely recommend that you go to her channel and watch the movie. I will put a link in the description below. So with that, let's move to Ascar. And also there, I know you want to see what's in the box, but I have a few other things in mind. <laughs> First of all, thanks Ascar for the hat. It's a running joke from last time when I unboxed the SK106 with the Siva hat on. So <laughs> they reacted, sent me that. Thanks a lot, appreciate it. So then there's one last thing which I want to address, which I find interesting before we finally, finally get the scope out of the box. Did you know that the SQA70 is already in stock at your store? Be it Gene Astro, be it Telescope Express in Germany, be it Zumstein Optik in Switzerland, wherever I looked, they are on stock. And by the way, it's around $1,600. So why do I mention that? Because until this moment when I record it, there is not a single YouTube review about SQA70 on the web. So if it goes on like that, I will be the first. And with all the other SQAs, at the moment, the YouTubers received them. They were on the web way before they were on stock. So what does that mean? And I think that's a good start from a use case point of view. Why does nobody talk about the 70, even if it's the most recent model of Ascar? And from my point of view, it lacks the sexiness. What do I mean with that? Let's go down the line. The first SQA that came out was the SQ85. It was the first and it was ultra sharp. So everybody wanted to have it. Everybody wanted to review it. Then we had the SQ55. It was tiny, tiny. It was cute. It was sweet. And it just shattered the red cat into pieces for less money, by the way. So again, Everybody wanted to have it. Everybody wanted to review it. Then came the 106, which was huge, which is massive, which is, let's be honest, a little bit a prestige object, right? But now the SK70 is nothing of all of that. It's somehow in between. We already have seen it now with the other SKAs. So from an attractiveness point of view, from a sexiness point of view, to review it, meh. <laughs> and that all said, I believe it is one of the most attractive for you as a customer. And why? Because it is kind of still affordable with $1,600. It has a nice wide focal length with 320 millimeters. It has all the properties the other SQAs have. It is rather light and from that point also easy to manage. It works on every mount, it works with every camera. So in principle you can have the Takahashi quality for the price of a regular scope. And so you know what this scope reminds me on? This here, an F4A400. The F4A400 is practically the same weight as the SQA70. It has about the same measures and actually with about $1,200 or $1,300, it's not even much cheaper. So here we have 400 millimeters. Here we have 320 millimeters. Here we have a 5.6. 
here we have a 4.8. So quite honestly, until now I recommended this scope as an entry scope, as a beginner scope. But with now the SK70 existing, if you can spend $400 more and have an ultra sharp scope, which is even faster, it's really something to question. So now after talking, 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 let's uncase it. So first of all, Ascar does not pack everything into the case because it's just too small. So these two things were just in the cardboard box. It was again, something to hang the case over your shoulder. I find it here more sensible than with the SQA 106, which I really didn't want it to have hanging around my shoulder. But here, yeah, it's a nice little comfortable case. You could do that. Then we have the usual documentation. So there's all the properties. We go through them in a second. And here's the certificate, the warranty, whatever. Um, yeah. So just to go again through the properties, we have an aperture size of 70 millimeters. That's why it says 70, right? The, we have a focal length of 336 millimeters, not 320, okay? A focal ratio of f.48. So all the SQAs have the f.48, which is really, really fast. It's a quintuplet Petzval APO, and the Petzval is really crucial because it means you do not have an, any back focus issues. As long as you are between 37 and 68 millimeters range, you're fine. Still remember, minimum 37 millimeters. This was my lesson learned from the SK106, where I connected the camera right to the scope. No, nope, 37 millimeters there has to be. So, and they still say that around 55 millimeters is optimal. The OTA weight is 2.68 kilograms and the weight with everything on it, the dovetail plate and handle is 3.5 kilograms. And 3.5 kilograms, ladies and gentlemen, that's not much. Even with the camera on it and everything, it fits on the AM3 easily. So no issue at all. So with that, let's open the case. And so, Here's the scope. The only other thing we have here in the package are, like with any SQA series, the adapters, which you can screw here to the back, if you want to have a different size. Here it's a little bit different than with, for example, SQA 106, where it starts with the M48 and then it goes upwards. Here we also have an M42 which I kind of feel they could also have provided with the SQA 106, given that as long as you shoot APS-C, M42 is absolutely fine. And then obviously default, the M48 is installed and there's also the M54 provided if you want to go full frame. And beside that now, we have here the scope. So again, as with every SQA, they do not provide a handle. Here, it's not such a big an issue because it's not so heavy, so you can easily hold it like this. Would I still have preferred having a handle included? Absolutely. Now I can obviously take the one I have from my 106, put it on here, and that is done. And now I have it on the handle. That said, you know, I still, given that I use both regularly, do I always want to change it from one to the other? Not really. So let's see. So otherwise, it's exactly the same as with any SQA. So you have where I put now the handle. You have this dovetail, so you could put in here a finder scope, for example. You have then two more here and here, where you can put on, for example, an ASI Air or so. Also here we have the very solid and luxurious mounting bracket with the easy way to open it up if you want to take the OTA out. We have here a quite long Vixen style dovetail. It's not the Los Mandy style as you would have with the SK-106, but it's also not necessary here from a weight point of view. We have here the focuser with the coarse and the fine setting. 
it goes absolutely smooth. Nothing else I would have expected. Then we obviously also have here the rotator. So I can rotate here and you have here the markings so that you nicely see how you rotate. So that works too. Then we have here in front the lens cap. It's metal, solid, goes very easy off. And here you can actually see the lens. And last but not least, the dew shield. It has also a nice metal screw which you can open. And it's quite long. Even I think it would not go back on its own. And that's how it looks with the extended dew shield. And that's actually all that I can tell you about this scope. But now we want to see how it performs. And thankfully, it's clear sky at the moment. So I will now go outside and run a test run. And then let's see if it performs like all the other SQAs with precision stars. And I will be back with the results. So welcome to my computer. Welcome to Pix Insight. I was able to shoot and what I was actually shooting was the Sagittarius star cloud, which I found given we want to look at stars, it's just the perfect object. So obviously given the nights are very short at the moment, the shoot was not too long. At the end, what I could use was 35 subs by 180 seconds. So that's about one hour, 45 minutes. And I think what I can already tell you now is that in exactly this situation, it pays off so much when you have a fast scope. And that was already my observation with the SQA 106. And also here, I think especially for people like me who live in cloud infested areas with, with not much clear sky all over the, the year, every hour counts. And so the difference having an f-stop of 7 or here 4.8 is just massive. So beside the quality of the stars or the sharpness, this f.48 is on its own a consideration. And while I understand that, for example, with the SK106, who is so expensive and so heavy, and this might not be a selling point alone, but here where we can say, well, we could have an FRA 400 or 300, whatever you want to take here. And we end up with an F 5.6. And with three or 400 bucks more, we duplicate the light that we gather. Then I think this justifies this few hundred bucks. Absolutely. So enough rambling. Let's look at the first picture. So this is one sub, three minutes long. That's quite amazing. I, by the way, just used the Antlia quad band filter, but no dual narrow band. And still only three minutes. We can see here some nebulosity. We see here very nicely the Omega Nebula and so many stars. And when we look now at the aberration inspector, this is on a one on one scale. They all look round, but let's look now really in the corners. Let's do some pixel peeping. I mean, if you, for example, look at these stars, I mean, these are tiny. But if we look at them, they look perfectly round. This is with the APS-C sensor with my ASI 2600 MC Air. I don't see anything that's not round here. That's by this amount of stars. It's really, for me, this picture, it's just overwhelming. When you see the amount of stars, when you zoom in here, it's just crazy. So here is now the picture unprocessed. I just cropped about a millimeter off each side, which was with the stacking artifacts, but otherwise there is nothing done here. And by the way, what is also not done here, which I think is amazing, is calibration frames. I didn't use any calibration frame, especially I did not use flats. And you see any vignetting? I don't. And that is that the light circle is so big by these SQA scopes, that if you do not use a full frame camera, at least from a vignetting point of view, there is no real reason for doing flats. Obviously, you might still have your dust bunnies on the filters, and that's another case, but vignetting is practically non existent. And another thing that's just mind blowing. So, also here, if we zoom in, what I really see is the color of the stars. It's so colorful, the blues and the reds. The halo is absolutely acceptable. Yes, 
that's anyway mostly caused by the filters, you might say, but I'm sometimes not so sure. And I feel that also the scope has to do its part to emit halos. And here, definitely, they're fully acceptable the way they are, if you think that it's not even processed yet. Also, by the way, if we look at the noise, it's always a little bit hard to show that over YouTube. But for one hour, 45 minutes, it's really not much noise. And that's again, thanks to the speed of the scope. So we look here now at the final photo. By the way, you can also see it on Astrobin. I'll leave the link in the description below if you want a pixel peep, if you want to download it in full resolution. I think anyway, it's a really interesting region here and the short focal length of 336 millimeters leave a lot of room to include a lot of stuff and still really nice. Here the Omega Nebula. And I mean, look at that. It was so tiny before. When I blow it up, one hour, 45 minutes. And I could practically post that as another picture, right? This looks great, actually. Look at all the details that you can see within the nebulosity. That is now on a one-on-one -on -one level. Look at all the details. And that is just amazing. And there's something else hidden in this picture. And that is this here, M18, star cluster. While it's probably not the most spectacular messy object, but anyway, they're nice, right? And they also look really nice here, they stick out. And then again, when we go here in the Sagittarius star cloud, it's just mind boggling the number of stars that you can see here. And when you see that, and when you think that this is just a tiny, tiny little bit of our own Milky Way, and that each of these stars might have a solar system with planets, there is such a high certainty that somewhere in this universe, and probably not just somewhere, but actually in many places, there is life. Because with so many stars, what's the probability that there isn't? And then up here we have this other nebulosity. Look at the nice nebulosity here with these blue stars. And all without the narrowband filter with just one hour, 45 minutes. So it's not about all the facts that I showed you before. If you want to convince yourself that this is a scope to buy, that's from my opinion it, not the facts. It's just that in less than two hours, I can get such a picture. That's just for me the main argument which illustrates how amazing this scope is. So I think you realize I'm really excited about this scope. I'm really happy that I have it. And it will definitely have a permanent um, space now on my rig. So I hope this was interesting. And if you want to see further results I get with this scope and other tips and tricks, let's have a look at this. Love space, love this channel, then you'll love what's going on over on my Patreon. Behind the scenes content, early access, breaking news, exclusive tutorials, tips and tricks just for you, all for the price of a coffee. Go deeper, follow stories as they unfold, get personal support and download all the supporting docs and data. Join our crew of space enthusiasts, support the channel, fuel the mission, and unlock a universe of extras. Links below. See you there. See you next time and clear skies.